there was a documentary that was made about you um, called American Radical. And in that documentary, you mentioned that your first involvement with the Israel Palestine conflict uh, was in 1982 uh, after the invasion of Lebanon, um, in which 20,000 civilians were killed. And you said in that documentary that you held a sign outside the Israeli consulate on 42nd Street. Here, I'll torture you a little bit by showing this picture. Uh, This is a screen cap from the documentary with a handwritten sign that says, This son of survivors of the Warsaw Ghetto uprising, Auschwitz and Majdanek, will not be silent. Israeli Nazis uh, stopped the Holocaust in Lebanon. So can you speak to how your sort of upbringing and family history informed your commitment uh, to this issue, perhaps starting as far back as, as 1982 in this photo? Both of my parents are survivors, as the sign indicates. Both of my parents were survivors of the Warsaw Ghetto. The ghetto formed roughly in 1940, and it lasted until 1943. In 19, April 1943, there was an uprising in the ghetto, and it was violently repressed by the Nazis. And then the survivors in Warsaw, uh, up until that point, there were about, most of the Jews in Warsaw had been deported at that point, including, I understand, but we never talked about it at home, including both my parents' families. My mother once mentioned that her brother, she just uh, very quickly in passing, uh, said that her brother had been deported to Treblinka, uh, which was a death camp. Uh, other, other than that, neither my brothers or, nor myself have any clue what happened to either my parents, my father's family or my mother's. In any event, they were both They didn't know each other at the time, but both my mother and father were deported to Meidenek concentration camp. And Meidenek was uh, like Auschwitz. It was a combination death camp and concentration camp. The two weren't identical. Uh, Death camp meant you were just going to be gassed and incinerated, but concentration camp, you worked. Slave labor. Uh, And then my mother was eventually deported to two slave labor camps. And my father, I never got the details, but once in the first book I wrote called Image and Reality of the Israel-Palestine Conflict, in the dedication, I dedicated the book to my parents, and I wrote, uh, dedicated to my mother, survivor of the Warsaw Ghetto, and my Donna concentration camp. And I wanted to get right my father, so I asked my mother, uh, so where was dad? And she said he had been in eight concentration camps. No, I have no idea. Uh, I, I know he ended up in Auschwitz concentration camp and he was in the Auschwitz death march. After the war, my mother was liberated by the Russians, my father by the Americans. After the war, they ended up in what was called a DP camp displaced people camp in Linz, Austria. Uh, And then they eventually came to the United States. Uh, My father was, he began as a factory worker. He eventually uh, moved up as far as a foreman. Uh, My mother raised the kids because uh, even though she was very well educated, she went to Warsaw University and she studied mathematics. We had no living relatives, and my parents wouldn't trust, my mother wouldn't trust her children with anybody. So she was a real stay-at-home mom until I was about fifth grade, and she was now went out to work. Uh, And she was very good at math, so she found jobs with Chase Manhattan Bank and other things. Uh, In any event, uh, my parents, oddly enough, they had these very idiosyncratic eccentric politics. They were fanatically pro-Soviet Union. I mean, they would put any Communist Party member to shame. You could not say a single word against Stalin in our home. It was a taboo. Um, Because they looked at the world through the lens of the Nazi Holocaust. 
uh, in the real world as against the fictional world or fictitious world of Hollywood. Uh, it was the Russia who defeated Nazism at a very severe domestic cost of some 27 million lives. About 300,000 Americans died during World War II. Roughly the same number of Brits died during World War II. In that fictitious Hollywood world, it was the US and the UK that defeated the Nazis, but in the real world, it was the Russians. And in addition, my parents always felt, uh, not incorrectly in my view, that the Russian people understood war. And so there was an immediate, there was a visceral sense of identity with the Russian people. Mm. I would have to say that even on the Russian side, there was an unusual sensitivity for the Jewish people. So even though the Russians, the Soviets or Russians, whichever you prefer, even though the Soviets endured an inconceivable horror during World War II, when uh, the foreign minister, Andrei Gromyko, spoke at the United Nations during the debate over the partition of Palestine, uh, Gromyko was, I have to say now, he was a lieutenant of Stalin, which means he had to have been utterly ruthless. Uh, utterly opportunistic. Uh, nonetheless, having said that, and not trying to prettify an ugly picture, he gave the most deeply moving speech of anyone in the United Nations, pointing to the special suffering that the Jews endured during World War II. And that special suffering was of a magnitude that justified them having a homeland. Uh, now, coming from the Russians who lost 27 million people to show such sympathy for the Jews is just very unusual. And my parents were eternally grateful for that. So as I said, even to their dying day, you could not they would not brook any criticism of Russia or the Soviet Union at the time, though they lived long enough to see the disintegration of the Soviet Union. And I remember once my mother was at the gas range cooking and I made a insensitive, sarcastic remark about the dissolution of the Soviet Union in 1989. And my mother went into a fury. Um, and the, the, the flip side of the coin was my parents had a terrible marriage. I can freely say it. And my brother in Chicago will be nodding his head to that. But my mother once said, the one thing your father and I never disagreed on was politics. <laughs> so it was a very strange thing. I think the last two Stalinists on God's earth <laughs> <laughs> all right so we're in so, my home <laughs> uh norman i think that and this has particularly come up since the events uh i want to just, say, to oh, I go just ahead, say one go last thing on that point because it had a very deep impact on my personality and my politics my parents had this very high standard of faithfulness so that anybody who criticized the Soviet Union, who previously had shared my parents' politics, but then went with the flow and started to criticize them, my parents would always sneer, traitor, traitor. And that had a very, it left a mark on me, an imprint, the idea of never abandoning your convictions for opportunistic reasons. Uh, you are a traitor. Mm -hmm. And, you know, so for me, it was inconceivable that I could ever be bought 
because I always, you know, in the back of my mind. Uh, I'll tell you just one short anecdote. As you know, by the 1970s, the Nazi Holocaust became a kind of business, as I write about in the book, The Holocaust Industry. And so if you were a real survivor of the camps, you could lay claim, you know, to very hefty honorariums to speak. And as my, brother, as my brother nodding his head in Chicago will agree, my parents were not indifferent to money. But what happened was that was the era of what was called free Soviet Jewry, free Russian Jews. And in order to make a public statement, you had to always begin by denouncing the Soviet Union. I remember that. Right. And my parents would never do it. Impossible. They liked money. But it was impossible that they would utter a single word contrary to their conviction. And that too, a public word, well, even in private, actually, but utter a public word uh, contrary to their conviction and their gratitude. They were alive because of the Red Army. And they were eternally in debt for that fact. So that was the values I internalized growing up. And I always used to say, you know, when people would accuse me of this, that, or the other, I would reply, but one thing you can never claim, that I could be bought. It can't happen. It cannot happen. I can be wrong, but I can't be bought. Please clap. <laughs>